Hi, my name is Sam Carey. I'm a public school teacher in San Francisco, and this is my YouTube channel for the new EdTech Classroom. In this video, I'm gonna teach you to use Screencastify to create simple tutorial videos for your students. Making your own tutorial videos might sound like an advanced technique, but with Screencastify, you can easily create your own tutorial videos for free. I used to dread the day when I would roll out new technology programs because my students would have a million questions and I would find myself crazily running around the room trying to problem solve everyone's issue. Now, using tutorials I make with Screencastify, I've pretty much entirely eliminated that issue because students can work at their own pace. Plus, posting tutorial videos to Google Classroom is a great way to keep parents in the loop about the programs you're using in class. Whenever I launch new technology in my classroom, I always use a screen capture program like Screencastify or ScreenFlow to create a tutorial video for my students. I recommend using Screencastify as a teacher because it's really easy to use, can be used on any computer, and it's also free. I make my new EdTech Classroom videos using ScreenFlow. That's a program that costs money and you can only use it on a Mac. I'll talk about ScreenFlow in a later tutorial video. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how you're gonna get Screencastify as a Google Chrome extension and start recording tutorial videos right away. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is go to your Chrome Web Store. In the Chrome Web Store, you can search for the Chrome extension, Screencastify. You wanna add this extension to Chrome. Once it's been added, you'll see that you have a icon for Screencastify that you can click on the top right side of your screen. When I click on Screencastify for the first time, it's gonna ask me to set up some different permissions. First, I'm gonna sign in with Google. I do like to use this option because then it saves files into my Google Drive that I can easily upload onto my Google Classroom. It's going to ask me whether or not I want to allow the program to use my camera and my microphone as well as drawing and annotation tools. I do want both those turned on, so I'm gonna click Allow. When you choose Screencastify for the first time, it's gonna ask you to set up a couple of preferences. First, you're gonna to need to set up your microphone. It's okay to just use your internal microphone. If you wanna use the webcam, which I recommend, it's fun for students, click on, select your internal webcam as well, and you'll be ready to record. Now you'll notice that you have 50 free videos for a free Screencastify account, which to me is more than enough for a typical educator. When you wanna record, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna hit that record button. One of the first instructional videos I record for my students is how they use Google Classroom. When you're ready to record an instructional video, you're gonna to go to the top right, click the Screencastify icon. You'll have some options. I usually choose to record my entire desktop. The reason why is because if you record a browser tab and then toggle to another browser, it's not gonna record that browser. And I've had it happen several times where I think I'm recording something and I'm not. It's pretty frustrating if I lose the entire video. So now I just record my entire desktop. I do like to uh, leave the webcam embedded just because it's fun for students. When I'm ready to record, I'll press that record button and you'll see that it's going to ask you to select the desktop You'll click share and now it is recording your video. First thing that I want to show you is how you can actually move around your webcam. So if it's in the way of some of the different texts that you're trying to show students or you just want to move it around to a different place, you can do that. Also want to show you the annotations down at the bottom of the screen. So the first one, if you want to pause your screencast video, you can do that there. To resume recording, hit resume. The mouse function is useful for calling out different parts of the screen. If you want to focus the mouse on certain places, you can use the focus option. If you want your mouse pointer to highlight when you click, you can click highlight click and it will click wherever you point your mouse. Also really useful when you're trying to draw attention to a particular place. If you want to make annotations, you can do so by clicking the little pencil. You can choose different colors. So if there's a place, for example, that I wanted to circle, I could circle or put a box to draw attention to that particular place on the website. If you want to erase that, you can click the eraser and it will erase your annotation. If you want to turn off the webcam, you can turn off the webcam option as well. And if you wanted to hide the tools on the toolbox, you could click X on that. When you're done recording your video, you can go back up to the Screencastify icon, click it, hit stop. It's gonna pop up your video. I recommend that you watch it before you push it out to students. 
it'll give you a couple choices about how you can save it. You can save it to your disk. You can click the share button and that will allow you to either share it on YouTube directly or Google Drive. I do actually set up a YouTube channel for my students so that they can just go there and find all my instructional videos. If you wanted to crop any part of the video or trim the length, you can do that here. There's some editing functions as well that you can explore if you wanna try some more advanced functions. I think the easiest thing to do is to view your videos on Google Drive. If you wanna try something more advanced like creating your own YouTube channel, of course you could do that as well. After a few minutes, you can go back, check to see if your file is ready. You'll see the video that you can then watch. And the great thing is that this file is now stored in your Google Drive. And now you can go to Google Classroom and easily upload it so that students are able to view it. I'm gonna to go to the Classwork tab click create material, create a new assignment called Google Classroom Tutorial. As I showed you in my Google Classroom Tutorial, I like to create topics so that I can better organize my information for students. I'm gonna put this video in my instructional videos topic. Then I'm going to hit the drive folder. You'll see that because I just created this video, it actually pops up right in my drive as a recently created file. I'm gonna click add, post, and now it's available for students to see. I hope you learned how easy it is to create tutorial videos for students using Screencastify. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you'd like to see more of my education technology tutorials, hit that red subscribe button. Below, you can also find a link to my website as well as my Twitter handle and my podcast where I have conversations with other educators about how they use technology in class and industry professionals about the latest and greatest in education technology. Thanks again and have a great week.